Hello and welcome back to Larry's Furries, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. Or this day in the year, I hope you know that by now. <laughs> Alright, so, the, this coming weekend is, of course, Memorial Day weekend, unfortunately. So, we, we will get a holiday next Monday, but unfortunately, that's all we get at, at our school. No, no extended break of any sort. But, we have... So, this, the holiday is officially, of course, is a commemoration of our, fa of our fallen soldiers, and as I'd be pleased to, to honor them in other forums, uh, I really can't do much with that in Larry's Prairies, because there's not much of going on with animals, uh, military dogs per perhaps, but I don't want to talk domestic dogs. So, of course, that brings us to the other significance of the occasion, in that Memorial Day is the traditional beginning of the summer vacation season. So, let's talk summer plans. I'm sure a lot, some of you might have, pl might have plans to go on vacation of various sorts, but others of you may be staying home. So, for the, so for the next final few weeks of school, I will be devoting part of our Larry Spurs segments to introducing you to the lo to the local zoos in our region. Yeah, places that you could that you could get, you could go during the summer to a sp you know, have have something fun to do for a day and learn more learn more about animals. <laughs> yeah, well, how could how can I not feature feature th this for her educational purposes? So so we'll begin a. Uh, our exploration of local zoos with zoo that's prop that's the the closest one to to you guys in Clifton. It's also one of the cheapest, although that's partly because it's the smallest. And and of course for me for me it's right, right next door, a couple blocks from my house. So Bergen County Zoo, Param located in Benson Park, Paramus, New Jersey. It's about a twenty minute drive from the Classical Academies. Uh, yeah. You want, if you want to get there yourself, so, uh, take the take either Route 20 or the Parkway up up to Route 4 eastbound. Uh, take that to Forest Avenue in Paramus. Uh, ex exit Forest Avenue, make the right, and there'll be a few blocks. There'll be a few blocks ahe ahead on your right. So, as I said, it's a fa fairly cheap zoo to get into. A Eight dollars a ticket for an adult, five five dollars for for a child. It's that's uh, half the price of the ne of the next cheapest one on on my on my list of uh, zoos to present the Valdo. Though unfortunately, this part of that is because this is the smallest zoo, so it, so there's not as much to see. Although it's in it is in the middle of a of a major county park, so there there are, there are other recreational opportunities while you're there. But the zoo itself specializes in animals from North and South America. So, so other than the farm animal display, pretty much all species native to our part of the world, or rough, roughly our part of the world in an extended sense. And, well, for individual animal to feature, so, uh, so what I did is I took is I went to the zoo myself uh, yesterday, took, fo took photos of all the animals, and Chose to, chose to pick the one to feature based on what, what photos came out best. So animals on exhibit include the class, classic North American creatures like bison, bald eagles, prairie dogs. Lots, lots of those. Those can be lots of fun to watch. Uh, also, also as I mentioned, a good proportion of South of Central and South American creatures. Uh, there, several different uh, species of monkey are on exhibit. Uh, they've got they've got a couple of different owls. Uh, got, there's a mount, there's a mountain lion, of course, and and uh, for the the winner of this of this week's uh, Larry Spurry featured animal again by virtue of being the one that that they gave me the best opportunity to photograph it. We have in Kingdom Animalia because it is of course an animal. Phylum Cordata, which is, as I explained to our sixth graders the, the other day, cord, Cordata, cord, 
Chordates re refers primarily to animals that have that have a spinal cord. <laughs> of course, that usually implies that th that they are vertebrates, creatures that have spines themselves. Although there are some minor exceptions like tardigrades, which interesting, but not but not today's video. Today we're focusing on one of them, on a more typical chordate, and in fact, class mammalia. So it's a mammal. So creatures that have fur, fur and give milk. <laughs> Order Audiodactyla. We've seen we've seen that group a few times before. When, so, since we we did, uh, let's say we did rain we did reindeer who are audiodactyls. So we did we did whale blue whales who are also audiodactyls. Uh, so the so leaving aside the whales, the the bulk of audiodactyls are even toed ungulates. So. <laughs> So some, of, so some of the, a large portion of that include includes our ruminants like the deer, but in this case we're do, we're dealing with family Camelidae, the camels, which di which differ from ruminants primarily in that they have a different a different digestive system structure, a three chambered stomach rather than four chambered. And today's featured animal in particular is llama guanaco. So that is the Guanaco, which is, which as as the G, the genus name suggests, is is a, related to the ordinate to the uh, to the more famous uh, domestic llama or llama, or the original Spanish pronunciation. Although you notice that the uh, that the scientific name uh, took off the double L. So anyway, to, but today's llama is is the Guanaco, the the wild the wild ancestor of the of the domestic llama, so here, so here we have the zoo, the zoo photo of him. Uh, yeah, uh, I accidentally posted the one with it. With now you can see, now it's hard, kind of hard to tell. You can, you can see his he his head at the top of his body. It's a little camouflage blends blends into the the background brush if you're not looking closely. But other than that, he's right up close to us against the against the fence. So nice, full on portrait. So the height of, height of, height of this guy is one, one to one point three meters. That's three point three to four point three. They can they can weigh between they can mass between ninety and one hundred forty kilograms. That's two hundred ten and three hundred between two hundred and three hundred ten pounds of weight. Because of course, if pound is a weight unit. We don't have a mass unit in in, in our in our American measure system. So guanaco are generalist herbivores. It means they can eat almost anything. They don't have any specific dietary restrictions, which, which furthermore makes them very adaptable. They can, they can live in a wide variety of environments. So they're native to South America. You see the, see the range marked on the map in, in green there. So it's mo so they they live in a variety of different environments. So they, so they they they're very well adapted to living at altitude. So they can, so you find you find them both in the mount in the mountains and in the uh, Altiplano steppes. So the uh, the uh, high plateau grasslands. Uh, they can also they can also uh, live just fine in in areas with not quite. Quite is a nice vegetation, including scrublands and even you know the Atacama Desert, with where the population the population of uh, guanacos in the desert is <coughs> excuse me living the desert guanacos are basically uh, living uh, cacti and lichens because that's about all that grows out there. <laughs> so they so they they're very adaptable to different food sources and different habitats. Which means that they have a pretty good survival outlook. Yes, adaptable species like this can put, can pretty well live through what a, whatever cha changes uh, na nature and uh, human intervention throws at them. Uh, it's the uh, it's the more specialized species that are that are likely to find themselves in trouble. Uh, so I guess I could guess I could also mention since yeah you know, they could. We're comparing them to, to domestic llamas. They are they are closely related. Llam, domestic llamas were were bred from from guanacos. Uh, 
with some with uh, some of other uh, other genetic infusion by crossbreeding with uh, with the uh, alpacas and th their wild ancestor, the vicuña. <laughs> uh, so both both the the domestic llama and the and the wild alpaca are val are valued for for their uh, fur, which which is which is a tip. You know, typically referred to as fibers. It has some properties that are similar to the wool that you find that you get from sheep. It's a bit use, useful for for various uh, human purposes, you know, making clothing and such. <laughs> and so, all right. So I guess that's what we need to know about both the both the the Guanaco and our, and my local my local zoo. <laughs> Here's the oh, here's another another picture of him. You know, out of, take it out in out in the wild without a fence, so you get a clear a clear view. Uh, so uh, infor information on this video mainly from Wikipedia. Pic pictures, well, I, of course I took the zoo pictures. The 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 other map and picture were were by some some other people. Creative Commons license, so. Available to share with you all. All right. So have a great, have a great day, and uh, after we come back from the holiday weekend, we'll we'll look into another another zoo that you could that you can examine as a destination for your summer travels. Uh, for now.